Okay, hello. This is going to be a 60 minute rock yoga class. Um, so we'll use a chair to start. You don't necessarily have to use a chair. You could sit on a, a book or something, but I'm um, just going to use a folding chair. Um, you don't have to use a mat either. If you want to do it in the grass or on a blanket or whatever, perfect, feel free. I highly recommend listening to some music, something that you like, um, you know, something with a, something a little up tempo or, or at least like a little mix that you made for yourself that brings you some joy. Um, yeah, let's get started. So I'll we'll take a seat. I don't want you to be able to see the microphone. <laughs> okay, so just make sure you move the fleshy parts out from under your sits bones. Feel your pelvis, feel your feet on the ground. Try to make it so that your hips are a little higher than your knees. You know, if I if I wanted to, I would probably put a couple of like blankets under my butt so my hips are a little bit higher. But just put your hands on your thighs and sit for a couple seconds with your eyes closed. Take a few deep breaths, filling all the way up and spilling all the way out. Use some sound when you breathe so you can connect your hearing to your breathing to really help calm yourself down. <sighs> Big belly breaths. <sighs> And then we'll just start with some cat cow tilts, seated cat cow tilts. So just forward and back a couple of times, feeling that movement starting at your pelvis, tucking and tilting, and then it moves all the way up through your whole spine. And you can move any pace that you want, just so long as it's connected with your breathing. And you can breathe in any direction you want. Inhale forward, exhale back, or vice versa. Just a couple more. Really try to get your arms and your legs more involved so that they're stabilizing you as you're moving your spine. Now instead of forward and back, let's make circles. So when you go forward, then go to the side, then go back, then go to the other side. So the forward and back is still in there. You just have the circles too. <sighs> and again, the movement stems from your pelvis, but it goes all the way up through the rest of your spine. Use your arms and legs to help you and connect with your breath. A couple more. Make sure you can hear your breath. You breathe in any way that you want, just as long as you can hear it and feel it moving through your body. That's how it's gonna help you. Okay, now go in circles in the other direction. So if you were going clockwise, go counterclockwise, vice versa. Any pace you want. Try to get your whole body to talk to each other. Talk to everything in there, working efficiently and not working with a ton of effort. Hmm. Okay, so we'll start to find some stillness in the middle again and then just observe all those sensations. Then see if you can flip your palms to face up. Okay, <sighs> hey, next we're gonna find those cat cow tilts again. We're gonna add our arms to it just to open up the windows a little bit, move the shoulders around. So grab for opposite elbows and start to go back and forth. Doesn't matter to me which arm is on top. If you can't grab for opposite elbows, you can grab for opposite wrists, right? Just making a little bit bigger of our frame. We're trying to get that full range of motion, including your arms now. Connect it with your breath, any pace you want. 
But try to be conscious, you know, like if you always move slow, maybe move fast a couple of times, or if you always move fast, maybe move slow a couple of times. Keep doing the same thing, but switch which arm is on top. Really sit up tall while you're doing it so you're not collapsing into your pelvis. The more you get your legs to help you, probably the easier it will be to get the rest of your body to help you. So starting at your feet, working up your legs, working through all the muscles in your abdominals, all the muscles that are wrapping around your spine and around your shoulder girdle to help you get moving. Just a couple more. All right, nice and easy, put your arms down on your lap. Again, try to find stillness and just observe the sensations that you're feeling. Sensation is just information and it's an opportunity for us to experience our life and what it's like to be alive. So try not to react to it, you know, just feel it. And know that no feeling is final, so the only thing you can count on is that it's going to change. Try not to react to whatever that feeling is, because it's going to change. Okay, so now web your hands like a tennis racket. We're going to do a couple more things on the seat, more breathing exercises. So web like a tennis racket. We're going to do it behind your back. So the palms face out, the palms face away from you, and you kind of make an equilateral triangle with your arms, or at least the best you can. You put your hands up between your shoulder blades. And so in this seat, we're just going to flap our wings a little bit. We're going to do in and out breath again. You can do it quicker. You can do it slow. I'm going to do a couple quick and a couple slow. So I'll start slow. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And then you do a couple quick. And I know it's kind of silly, but we're trying to get our shoulders moving. We're trying to light some fire in our body. So just give it all you got. Try not to think about it too much. We'll be done before you know. Do 10 more. And then pause and feel it. Three breaths. Okay, next thing we'll do, hands on the shoulders. Put your hands spread out on your shoulder blades. Inhale to the left and exhale to the right. So it's more like a spiral. And again, push into your feet. Use your legs. Sit up tall. Try to get your whole body working together. You're not collapsing into your hips. You're really using those muscles across your waist to help you. Inhale left, exhale right. Keep sitting up tall. All right, we're going to keep doing the same thing, but change the position of our hands. So interlace your fingers behind your head. Keep doing that same thing. Inhale left, exhale right. Slowly start to bring it to stillness. And now we'll focus just on the out breath. So start to wave your arms left to right. Your hand goes to the center of your chest. Your other hand goes out to the sides. And when your hand comes to the center of your chest, you exhale. And you can exhale out your nose or out your mouth. I'm going to do out my nose. You can touch the tip of your tongue right behind your teeth. Right behind your upper teeth, your soft palate, or your hard palate. And sometimes that makes it a little easier to breathe out your nose. 
Keep a little swing with it, you know, keep a little loose with it. But use your belly to get that air out of you. Okay, to rock a little side to side, use your feet on the floor for sure. Stay with it, even if it feels a little challenging in the arms, right? Even if the arms get a little bit tired. Now we're going to keep that out breath. We're going to put our arms up. So take your right hand and flip the palm up right overhead. Take your left hand and put it on top. So your palms are pressed together like a clap, but you're pushing that left hand up with your right hand. Now exhale out. Try to do 30. Three, zero. Once you've done 30, switch which hand is on top. So the left hand palm presses up, right hand on top, give it a clap, 30 breaths out. Sit up tall, use your belly to help get that air out. Okay, throw your arms up, take a really big inhale. Interlace your fingers again, flip the palms up, and take three more breaths in through your mouth. Hold it, stretch up. Take another sip in through your nose. Hold it, reach up. Let your arms fall into your lap and observe the sensations for three breaths. Try to be still, close your eyes. Good work. Okay, let's do just a little bit of twisting before we get out of this chair. So right hand behind you. Left hand on, on the right thigh. Look over your right shoulder, sit up tall. Three breaths. Ah, use a little sound. Ah. Okay, switch. Ah. Last thing on the chair, I promise. Bring your right leg out to the right side. Bring your left leg straight back behind you. Stand the ball of your left foot. Lift your left arm up and lean over to the right. Good. Lean back. Try to lift that other arm up if you can. And then switch sides. Right arm up as your right leg goes back. Right heel's lifted. Reach over to the left. And then a big back bend. If you can, then both your arms up. Deep breath. All right. Get rid of that chair. I'm going to uh, close the window over here just in case there's some sound. All right. We're going to get on our mat and do some cat-cow tilts on our hands and knees. Feel free to put something underneath, underneath your knees if you need it. Round and arch your spine as quick or as slow as you want. Try a couple slow and a couple fast. Connect it to your breath in either direction, but try both just to see what you like. So inhale when you round, exhale when you arch, Maybe stick out your tongue. Or you can exhale when you round and inhale when you work. Okay, try a couple quickly. Use your hands and feet just like you were when you were seated. Try not to make your spine do all the work. Arms and legs are there to help you too. Start to slow it down. Okay, tuck your toes. 
Come down onto your elbows, interlace your fingers, that tennis racket grip again. And now using your hands and feet, your arms and your legs, make circles with your head and your tail. Just like we were making circles before, you're using your arms and legs. Obviously it's a little different when you're on your hands and knees versus when you're sitting. But try to make a full circle. And after a couple, like maybe after five circles, change directions and go the other way, five circles. And then the other way again. And if it feels too much to get both your head and tail working, just do one at a time. Couple more each side and slowly start to bring it to stillness. All right, put your hands down. Uh, no, keep that same interlaced finger grip and put your palms flat on the floor. Try not to let your pinkies come undone. Keep your pinkies crossed. Now cross your legs. So put your right leg in front of your left leg. Both of your feet are flat on the floor. One knee is in front of the other and they're touching. And now do cat cow tilts again. Really push into the shins, push into the feet, push into the palms. We'll be off of our knees in a second. Try to keep going with this. Keep breathing. Okay, now a few circles. Try to go at least five in each direction. Move your tail around a lot. Really move your thigh bones around in your pelvis. Loosen up your hips. Change directions. And then take your hands out from that webbing grip. Switch which leg is in front. And now if you can, try flipping your hands either sideways, fingers face to the sides, or fingers face all the way backwards. If you can do all the way backwards, do it all the way backwards because we won't be here long. Give your wrist a good stretch. So cat cow tilts. Do five to ten cat cow tilts, and then you'll make your circles. Remember, really push into your feet, really push into your hands. Use your arms and legs to help you get your spine moving. Go in any pace you want, just try to stay with your breath. Some circles if you haven't started them yet, and really get all around your thigh bones. I like to think about this kind of stuff as, you know, like when you're making brownies and you have to clean out the bowl with a spatula, this is kind of what we're doing. We're cleaning out our pelvis with the spatula of our thigh bones. I know this is a little weird, but humor me. Change the direction of your circles. Ah, keep breathing, loosen it up. All right, slowly come to stillness, put your hands on straight, and let's do a down dog. Uncross your legs, lift your butt up, it's an upside down V shape. You can pedal your knees, pedal your elbows, loosen up your hips. Ah, find that twist like we were doing before. Left to right. Switching weight between hands and feet. And now let's go forward and back. So from a dog, you inhale forward to a plank, an upper push up, and then back to a dog. And you can go any pace you want, quick or slow, just connected to the breathing. You know, you'll start to notice like a lot of this stuff is really, it's all about you and how you want to manipulate your time and manipulate your body because really that's all it is it's you it's your experience that's your life so you get to choose how you want to participate in it right you don't have to do this you can always press pause and do something else but if you can you know give yourself that time to really focus only on your physical body and your breath so you can give your mind a break for a little bit. Couple more of these. And of course, add your own flair to it. If you want it to be more smooth and snaky, that might feel nice. If you want it to be a little bit more angular, that's cool too. 
All right, the next time you're in a down dog, stay there and start to walk your hands back to your feet really slowly. Keep your knees bent so your belly goes to your thighs. And then once your hips get back to your feet, measure two fist distance between the arches of your feet, wrap them around there. That's about your hips width. Drop your head. Shift the weight side to side from foot to foot. And then shift the weight from front to back, from toes to heels. You can do this with your hands on the ground. Or if it feels too challenging or if the floor is too far away, put your elbows on top of your thighs. But let your neck go. Close your eyes if you can. Roll your eyes around in their sockets so they get a little stretch. Okay, put your hands on your kneecaps or you can keep your elbows on your thighs, but flatten up your back. Move forward so you can see my flat back a little better. With your flat back and your feet hips with distance apart, make some circles with your thigh bones again. Try to move your hips around. Whole time, try to keep a flat back so chest goes forward and butt goes back. Belly stays in. Change direction of your circles. Okay, now we'll add some twists to this. So your elbows can stay on your thighs or you can put a hand on the floor. Left elbow stays down, right hand goes to the lower back. You can just hold it there or you could take a big stroke with your arm just to get your shoulder involved. And then you switch which arm that's down. So the right elbow stays down, the left hand goes back behind you. You can hold it, or you can swim it, reach that left arm way up and over. So again, you can do this with your elbows on your thighs, giving you some support, trying to keep a flat back the whole time. Or you can put your hand down on the ground, just bend your knees a little bit more, but again, keep a flat back. So really, I'm trying to keep my spine parallel to the floor. Use your belly to help you. Use your legs to help you. Use your arms to help you. Just a couple more. You go at your own pace. Just connect it with your breath. And the next time you come through, just drop it into that hang. Hang your head, hang your arms. A little bend in your knees. Pull your belly in and try to roll up very slowly to standing. Once you get all the way up to the top, take your hands on your shoulders, make big circles with your shoulders, roll them back. Keep a little bend in your knees while you do this, so it's almost like shock absorbers catching that roll in your shoulders. Okay, and then you can stay on your mat or you can come off it. I'm gonna come off it because my mat is slippery, but we're gonna do a little swing, a little twist side to side. So the twist starts way down at my feet. You'll notice that I'm like pivoting on the ball of my foot, and then that movement comes all the way up through my hips, through my ribs, through my arms, even through my skull. When you swing your arms, a couple of different ways you could do it, just make sure they're loose. You can tap your hand on the front and on the back behind you, or you can just swing it straight up and out. So they're going in that direction of the twist. Just depends on how big you want to go with your arms. Keep at least a little bend in your knees so that your pelvis stays loose as this is happening. So it really takes part in the twist. We're not going to do this much longer. This is meant to help you get more grounded, feel your legs a little more, and feel how that works throughout your whole torso. How your legs work to help support and ground your whole torso. Okay, slowly start to come to stillness. And then just stand with your legs about shoulder width apart. And give yourself a hug. Doesn't matter which arm you start with on top. We're going to do both. And now I just want you to make circles with your upper body. Your head, your neck, your shoulders. Get the whole thing to work. I'm coming a little closer. Just so you can see. Try to close your eyes while you're doing it too. Let your eyes roll around in their sockets. Keep your belly involved so it's supporting the weight of your torso. Change the direction of the circles. Keep holding on to your shoulder blades. Okay, take a deep breath, 
open your arms really wide and then switch which arm is on top. Hold those shoulder blades again. Circle again. Close your eyes. Let your head roll around. Let your shoulders roll around. And of course, if you want to make the circles like even bigger and go all the way down and back, you're welcome to do that. I'm just trying to get you to focus a little more on your head and neck. Okay, a couple circles in the other direction. Okay, slowly start to come to stillness. And then lift your arms up over your head. So I'm going to go back on my mat. We're going to do, we're going to come in and out of a chair pose, a mountain pose, and a back bend, and a forward fold. So that instead of doing squats, we just repeat that over and over and over again. So put your arms up over your head, soften your knees, feet about hips with distance apart, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths. And then stretch up and backward bend. Try to focus on how tall you can get in your chest, how long you can get in your arms, how long you can get with your neck. You can support and hold on to the back of your head if that sounds interesting to you. And then with a the flat back, I want you to fold over your legs. So stick your butt out, chest goes down towards the floor, and then you hang over your legs. Halfway lift your spine to bring you into a chair pose. So chest forward, butt back, weight in the heels. Lift your arms up over your head, take a deep breath, and then stand up, backward bend, forward fold, halfway lift, chair pose, mountain pose, backward bend, forward fold, halfway lift, chair pose, mountain pose, backward bend, Forward fold. So you get the hang of it. Halfway lift. Chair pose. Mountain pose. Backward bend. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Chair pose. Mountain pose. Keep going. Again, any pace you want. Use your legs, use your belly, use your arms, your whole body is working together to help you. How about five more? I totally lost count. I'm just going to do this one. <laughs> okay, so once you're in your head, step one of your feet back. It doesn't matter to you when you start with. Put your back knee down. And just move it around a little bit. You can go forward and back. You can go circles. You know, you can do a little side to side. Just try to pull it a little bit. Backward bend, forward round. And then hold a lunge. So keep your front knee bent, front knee over your front ankle. You can hold the ground, you can hold your front thigh, you can hold your lower back, but a couple of deep breaths to lift your chest up. Really push into both of your legs. Really drop your tail and lift your chest and lift the backs of your ears. A couple more deep breaths. Okay, and then put your hands down. Bring that front leg out to the side, so straight in line with your knee. And then on your hands and knees, make big circles over to the side. So you're using that foot that's on the floor. Well, you're using both feet on the floor and you're using your hands. Just again, trying to get into the pelvis. 
Try not to worry about if you're doing it right. Like, just make some circles. You can tuck your back toes. Trust your instinct. Like if something doesn't feel right, it might not be right. So really kind of trust your instincts about getting into your body, stretching it out, straightening it. Change the direction of your circles if you haven't, just a couple of times. And then let's do a down dog. We're gonna switch this leg is forward. So before my left leg was forward, so now I'm gonna put the right leg forward, back knee down, front knee in the front armpit, and then rock forward, back, side to side. Any sort of exploration you wanna do to get into those hips a little bit more. Move your feet around. And then the next time the front knee's bent, keep it bent, lift up. Woo. Use your feet, use your legs, use your belly. I think it feels nice to flip my palms up when my hands are on my lower back just to give my wrist a stretch. It might be nice for you. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, elbows together. And then take your hands down and put your leg out to the side. So my right leg is out to the side. Again, on hands and knees, we'll make some circles. Really press into the pinky edge of that foot so you can get into your IT band. Maybe try dropping your head, maybe try moving your shoulders around. Change the direction of those circles. Just a couple more. All right, down, down. Uno, mas tiempo. Well, that's not true. We'll probably do it more than just one more time. Pedal the knees, pedal the elbows. All right, look at your hands. Walk your left hand back about a, a hand's width, a hand's length. So see my fingers line up with my wrist. And then take your right hand under and grab a hold of your left ankle, left heel, or maybe left calf if it's too far. Look under your left armpit, stick your butt up as high as you can. Three breaths. Try to keep your shoulders away from your ears. Try to keep your elbows and your knees buoyant. And then switch hands. So line up your right hand with your left. Take your left hand, grab your right heel, or right ankle, or right calf. Your chin goes to your right armpit as you look under. Lift your butt up higher. Keep your shoulders away from your ears. Remember, stay buoyant. One more breath. All right. Walk it out into a plank, upper push-up. And then just start to bring opposite knee to opposite elbow. And it's like mountain climbers. <clears throat> and again, like before, like always, you go at your own pace, your own tempo. Maybe you stay with some music, with the music that you're listening to. Maybe it's with your breath. Maybe you slow it way down and try to be really specific about how you're placing your knee and how you're placing your foot. Connect it with your breath. Let's just do a couple more. Now go same knee, same elbow. Keep your spine long, keep breathing. Head reaches away from heels, reaching back. Stay with it, almost there. All right, hold a plank. Now we'll go side plank. You can go to the outer edge of the foot and the hands, or you can come down to your knee. A <sighs> couple deep breaths. If you want to try reaching top arm forward, top, top leg up, really push into whatever's on the ground. And then see if you can take that foot on the floor back behind you, that top leg. So even if your leg is out, you can still put that top leg behind you and do a little back bend. 
Keep some buoyancy in that elbow that's holding you up. And then switch sides. Both feet could be on the floor. You could put a knee on the floor. Try picking the arm and the leg up. Keep your belly in. Stay buoyant. Don't get rigid. And then try taking that foot back behind you. Lift your chest up. Let your head drop back. A little back bend. And then come back to center. We're going to do a few push-ups before we go to our bellies. Feel free to use your knees like me. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Pull your elbows back by your ribs. And try to do 10. Keep breathing. Ten more. <laughs> you can always just hold it in a plank. You can always squeeze your shoulder blades together, push them up and down. All right, all the way to the belly. Good work. Bring your hands out to the sides. Tend in your fingers. Point your elbows towards the ceiling. Push your feet into the floor and snake your spine up and down. Keep breathing. All right, slowly come to stillness. Put your arms, put your hands underneath your forehead. Bend your knees and windshield wiper your shins left to right. <sighs> okay, so with your hands under your forehead and with your feet flexed and your knees bent, kick one heel at a time towards the ceiling just to get your glutes working. Use your exhale to kick it up. Relax your head, relax your neck, your face. Close your eyes. All right, windshield wiper again with your shins. Just loosen up your hips, your low back. All right, now we're going to lift arms and legs up away from the floor. So take your hands out from under your forehead. Put them out like a cactus, or you can make them like a teeny. We're going to come up and down, kind of like we're doing snow angels. Use an exhale as you lift up. Make your arms long, your legs long. And just try to get up to lift high up away from the floor without forcing it. No jamming yourself up. Keep it smooth, keep it with your breath. Three more. All right, put your arms out like a T. Look to the left so your right cheek's on the floor. Bend your left elbow and point it up towards the ceiling. Roll over onto your right hip, and then bend your left knee and point it up to the ceiling. So left elbow, left knee up to the ceiling. My right arm is straight up to the right with my palm facing down on the ground. Just a little stretch for your shoulder, a couple deep breaths. Relax your head and neck. Connect your hearing to your breathing, so make some sound when you breathe to help calm you down. <laughs> okay, other side. So slowly come back to your belly. Left arm goes out to the left. Point the right elbow towards the ceiling. Left cheek, your left temple is on the floor. Right knee, right elbow, point straight up. Right hand, right foot, flat on the ground. Feel free to rock a little bit with it. Just try to release into the ground. A couple more deep breaths, belly breaths. Alright, nice and easy, come back to your belly and then push back 
to a child's pose. Use your hands and knees. Bring your hips back up to your heels. Toes can be pointed or tucked. Knees can be together or apart. Arms can be forward or back. Feel free to wiggle a little, rock a little side to side. At least three deep breaths and use some sound to breathe. Okay, so this will be the last sound dog for real. <laughs> so tuck your toes, come up, and this time lift your right leg up, bring your right knee forward towards your forehead, and then kick it up and back and do that three more times. Two, three, four. Now on the fifth time, step your foot all the way forward between your hands. Slowly lift your torso up with a flat back, put your arms out like a cactus, and then start to do little pulses just to get real deep into your hips. Keep your chest up, weight in the front heel and the ball of the back foot. Okay, now open up to your left, so it's like a warrior two, but keep your pulses going. Maybe arms stay out like a cactus. Okay, now we're gonna shift back to the back leg. So bend your back knee, turn your toes out, flex the front foot, and then go back to your warrior two. So back and forth, front knee bent, back knee bent. Keep your belly in, keep your chest up, go side to side, tail drops down. You can do whatever you want with your arms, maybe like make circles with them. <laughs> But we're just going from a warrior two to this hamstring stretch. All right, now we're gonna switch it. So turn all the way over to your left foot. Put your hands down, lift your left leg up, and then four times, knee to forehead. On the fifth time, you step it between your hands. Come up to the lunge with a flat back. Arms up, find your pulses. Tail down, head up. Ball of the back foot on the floor. Front heel pushes down, keep that back heel lifted. Couple more. Maybe try your back stroke. Any kind of movement you want. <laughs> okay, now open up to the side and keep your little pulses in your warrior too. I got Grandmaster Flash playing in my head right now. And so I wonder how I keep moving. Okay, now we're gonna go back and forth from Warrior Two to Skandasana. So that's this hamstring stretch to flex the front foot. Come forward, come back. As much as you can, drop your tail, lift your belly. Keep your movement smooth. Try not to force it. Feel controlled while you're going, even if that means you move just a little less. Okay, let's do one more thing on both of our feet. Take a nice big wide squat. Turn your toes out. Tail down, arms up. Maybe a little dancing with your arms. And then we're gonna go side to side. So straighten one leg and then straighten the other leg. Try to let the movement stem from your center. Just rocking you left to right. Just giving it a good stretch. Really get all these muscles across your waist working. Almost there. Slowly start to come to stillness. And then turn your feet in so that they're parallel. Take a big breath and a nice big wide fold over your legs. When you drop down there, you can pedal the knees. You can do a couple of twists maybe, lift one arm up at a time. Or you can just hang. 
Shift the weight around in your feet from toes to heels, from side to side, bend and straighten the knees. If you want a little shoulder stretch, interlace your fingers at the base of your spine. You can keep them there, or you can stretch them away from your shoulders. <sighs> One more big breath. And then we'll take a squat, so walk your feet just a little closer, heels in, toes out. Bend your knees and sit your butt down. If when you squat your butt down, your heels lift up, put your elbows on your thighs so that you can keep your heels flat on the ground. And if you can keep your heels flat and drop your butt, great, just try to lift your chest. <sighs> look over right shoulder, look over left shoulder. Keep the spine not nice and long, the waist long, the neck long. And then walk your hands back behind you so we can do a reverse tabletop. So once you got them back there, keep your butt down. Do little pulses with your elbows going back. Pressing into hands and feet best you can. You can do this with your butt down too. If it feels like too much to have the butt up. Okay, turn your fingers out to the sides. And again, you can do this with your butt down. Or you could try to keep your butt up and tap opposite hand to opposite foot. Just a little bit more effort. We're almost done. I feel like I keep saying that. <laughs> keep your belly in. All right, slowly sit your butt down. And if you're on a mat, scooch to the front of it. Just rock yourself up and down a couple of times. Whew. All right, next time you're up, stay up. Put your right leg straight out in front of you, bend your left knee. Put your right hand back behind you and lift your left arm up. Stretch forward for the pinky edge of the right foot and then drop your head down. Keep your belly in. Step into your left foot as if you could like lift your butt up so left foot stays flat on the ground. You can see my left knee up over there. Okay, switch legs. So bend the right knee, right foot flat, left hand behind you. Right arm up, go forward on the inside of your right knee. Grab the pinky edge of the foot, drop your head down. Hmm. Hmm. All right, nice and easy, sit up. And then you can either hold your shins or you can stretch your arms out in front, but real slow with the curved spine. Come all the way down. And then when you do get down, put your shoulders down, walk your shoulder blades underneath you so they're flat and put your arms out like a cactus if you can. You can also keep your elbows in by your ribs. We're going to do bridge posts up and down, just coming in and out of glute bridges. So walk your feet in close to your butt, just go up and down with your hips. And after you've gone up and down with your hips a couple of times, try going up and down with your heels a couple of times, so keep your butt up. Just go up and down with the heels. Relax your neck, close your eyes if you can. Roll your eyes around in their sockets so they get a little stretch. And now that you've gone up and down with your heels a couple of times and your hips a couple of times, do little pulses and try to push your hips closer to the ceiling. Keep your belly in. Keep all the muscles in your pelvic floor pulled in. Again, you can use your triceps on the floor to help you pulling your elbows in by your ribs. Couple more. All right, slowly lower your butt down, lower your heels down. Widen your feet, so put them as wide as the mat, and then just do a little windshield wiper, left to right, loosen up your hip flexors. Okay. So a little bit of bicycle crunches. We'll do one more stretch and then we'll lay down. So interlace your fingers behind your head. Try to bring opposite elbow towards opposite knee and maybe not even your elbow. 
Try to bring your opposite armpit towards opposite knee. So your chin stays away from your chest and your elbows stay open nice and wide. And then if you want to try and extend the bicycle crunches, try to do it with straight arms and straight legs. Stay with your breath. Four more. Three, two, one. Nice job. Lay your head down. Cross your legs now and grab a hold of your feet. So bring your knees towards your chest, your legs are crossed. Grab a hold of, uh, of your feet and pull them in opposite directions. Try to keep yourself on spit. So feel where your hips start to go and try to keep your tail pulling down and your head reaching up. So it's like your spine is on a spit. Then you reach your feet in opposite directions to get into your hips a little bit more, your hip flexors. And feel free to bring your knees close to you, far away from you. You can pull your feet close to you, far away from you. And then to alternate, go to a happy baby first. So open your legs real wide, stick out your tongue. Stretch out your face. And then switch which leg is on top. Connect your hearing to your breathing. Remember, calm yourself down, get your heart rate down, your breath rate down. One more happy baby, maybe a little foot massage, maybe straighten your legs out. And then we'll end in constructive rest. So let your knees fall in towards each other with your feet on the floor, arms out like a cactus, or you lay in any way that feels most comfortable for you. Close your eyes and take a couple deep breaths. You can stop manipulating your breath now. Just kind of let it flow. But see if you can let your belly relax enough to really Take a deep breath all the way to the bottom of your lungs. Get your diaphragm to work. <sighs> While you're laying here, I just want you to picture an image of someone or something that you think needs some, some help, some good vibes. Maybe it's you, maybe it's somebody in your life, maybe it's somebody you saw on the news. With your eyes closed and your mind's eye focusing on whatever image that is, make it clear so you can see it and you can really send this attention to it. I just want you to think, may you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be whole. And with each of those thoughts, take a deep breath. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be whole. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be whole. Before you get up, roll yourself to a fetal position. Feel free to rest as long as you like. <sighs> Thank you so much. Please let me know if you have any questions. So stoked to have you. Um, yeah, I hope you have a really great day. And I hope I hear from you soon.